This video is sponsored by Ming River. Okay, everyone, so this one went a little bit off the rails in the best possible way, if I may say so. So originally I set out to find an easy way to recreate one of my favorite Sichuan dishes of all time. It's called Suan Cai Yu. Uh, I'll explain what that is in a bit. And you know what, uh, good news first, I did actually find the shortcut I was looking for, but I'm also 100% sure that I'm gonna get into quite a lot of trouble for it, so please bear with me. But what came after is actually more important because inspiration struck and I ended up making a delicious fried fish sandwich inspired by the flavors of Suan Cai Yu and Sichuan cuisine. And that one, you guys, that one's definitely a keeper, but Let's start from the beginning. So this video is the final part of my long-term collab with Ming River Baijiu, the sponsor of this series. We covered a whole number of Sichuan delicacies from chili oil to Kung Pao chicken and learned from experts around the world how much there really is to discover. But as a closing chapter, I really wanted to choose a dish that can serve as a reminder of the fact that every cuisine in the world is a living and evolving thing. And that of course involves Sichuan cuisine. And today's dish, Suan Cai Yu is a perfect example of that. If you look up its history, you will find more than one origin story, at least four to be precise, most of them placing its roots around the Chongqing region, but more importantly, only in the late 20th century. So yeah, this dish is not more than just a few decades old and it actually only grew in popularity across all parts of China outside Sichuan quite recently. And that's when I happened to have picked it up living in Shanghai back then. But maybe it's time to talk about what Suan Cai Yu actually is. So generally speaking, Suan Cai Yu is this rich, spicy and tangy fish stew topped with delicious chili oil and greens. And I know it maybe doesn't sound super exciting, but trust me, it is good. It's sometimes said to be a derivative of a much more famous but also kind of hardcore dish called Shui Zhu Yu, which is just bursting with spices. For Suan Cai Yu, you go much, much easier on the numbing and spicy profile and what makes it unique is the addition of, well, Suan Cai, that's pickled mustard greens. Think of it as Sichuan's answer to kimchi. And you might have pieced it together already, but yes, that is where the name comes from. Suan Cai just means pickled veggies and Yu means fish. But honestly, I don't recommend wrecking your brain around translating the names of Chinese food dishes. That usually tends to go wrong. Let's just call it Suan Cai Yu. So as always, there are many versions of it. The one I like the most and that I went for in this video has a rich and creamy broth and comes with sweet potato noodles and tofu sheets, making it an entire meal, basically. Now, whenever I tackle a new Chinese dish, I always start my research with the classics. I check out Chef Wang Gang and I check out Chinese Cooking Demystified. Both have really good videos on Suan Cai Yu with fantastic results and most of the recipe isn't even that difficult, except except for one crucial step. They both start with a whole fish, a variety of carp traditionally. And there is a very good reason for this. So when you make Suan Cai Yu, you use the fillets of the fish to get delicious tender slices of meat into the dish, but the head, fish bones and everything else are used to get this rich and almost milky white fish stock, which I absolutely love. But guys, relax. I know that like 95% of you, just like me, probably don't have access to you know a high quality fish market and that's what brings me to my simplified and also borderline insane recipe variation i mean obviously i think it works but we'll also have ap and grace taste it and see if i have completely lost my mind or maybe not so give me a chance guys enough with the talking let's go so first let's address the whole fish conundrum since my goal is to maximize access to this dish i opted for frozen fillets and these are cod fillets. In my neck of the woods, this is one of the most common ways you find fish in supermarkets. Traditionally, of course, you could go for an Asian sweetwater carp, but let's be real, not gonna happen. Going this route has one major advantage. You can get the required thin slices of fish very easily by using semi-thawed, still firm fish. Good luck getting them into this shape with a floppy fresh fish on your first try. Now we're making a simple protective slurry made from cornstarch, a bit of salt, sugar, white pepper, and an egg white. Add the fish slices, mix well, but be careful not to break them apart. Once they're coated evenly, we can let those 
Rose hang out and come to room temp on the side. In the meantime, let's get some of our other components ready. The first one will be this, a nest of sweet potato noodles. If you haven't had those, try them. They have an awesome slippery but firm texture. Obviously not now, now they're dry, which is why well, we'll have to soak them, but not by themselves. As I mentioned before, I do like tofu in my Swan Tsai Yu, and hands down, the best agon of tofu is firm tofu sheets. I first separate those and then layer and cut them into, well, tagliatelle would be the best description, I think, because that's kind of how they feel in the finished dish. Add those to the sweet potato noodles, along with a good handful of mung bean sprouts and cover everything with super hot water to soak. This will take a while, but we have a bit of time because now let's get to the actual shocking part. And please, in the comments, behave, guys. <sighs> okay, so my substitute for the milky fishbone stock you'd normally have to make yourself is a mix of mayonnaise, uh, optional Chinese cooking wine, and non-optional, a bit of fish sauce. So I understand how this sounds, but look, it's definitely got that creamy white color. Even when we add some extra water to thin it out, it kind of tastes like a Chinese fish stock, especially if we drop in a few slices of ginger. And I mean, it takes like 30 seconds to make. But let's move on from this before you give me shit and talk real Sichuan style pickled mustard greens. It sounds pretty exotic, but there's actually a very good chance you'll find it at your local Asian grocery store. So my tip would be to look for smaller individual pouches. Those are popular in China as snacks, rice topping or instant noodle improvers, but they're also perfect for us. They last forever and they are very, very cheap. They're eventually gonna go into our soup base, but let's not get ahead of ourselves here. First, let's start this off with some oil in a medium large pot, into which we'll gently infuse the holy trinity of Chinese cuisine, ginger, scallions, and garlic. Now it's pickle time, but surprise, we're adding pickled chilies first. I'm using these mild green peppers instead of the traditional Sichuan pickled chili, but they'll work in a pinch, but of course, finely minced. And at last, here is our pickled mustard greens, which conveniently come with a bit of extra spice and some MSG. Give everything a quick stir and it's mayo soup time. It sounds worse every single time I say it. Anyway, you'll notice your soup will probably have started to separate and that that is completely fine. Just give it a final mix and the emulsion will come right back together and stay that way for quite a while. Let your soup base come up to a simmer and start adding your fish slices. Make sure they're evenly coated by a thin layer of our slurry. That's gonna help keep them succulent and tender. Give your soup a minute or two on medium heat and then turn off and set aside. We don't actually need much more than the residual heat to get our fish slices cooked. In the meantime, we can start prepping our serving bowl. First, let's get our noodles and other noodaloids in there first and then carefully pour our freshly made soup over them. Obviously, we gotta work on presentability here. So fix number one, drizzle with a generous amount of chili crisp or chili oil. I just ran out of my homemade stuff, so I went store-bought this time, but you should watch my video on chili crisp if you haven't yet. And finally, also with a heavy hand, a topping of scallion greens, and unless you're a cilantrophobe, the more of the good stuff, the better. I gotta say, at least visually, this would definitely pass for me, you guys. Rich and milky, topped with lots of good stuff. Stuff. So we're about to give this a much anticipated taste test and of course I'm gonna show you how to make that delicious Sichuan fried fish burger I really really want you to try but first let me thank the sponsor of this video Ming River Baijiu. In case you need a reminder Baijiu is the number one traditional distilled spirit of China and Ming River is bringing the finest Sichuan Baijiu to folks in Europe and the US. My favorite part about Ming River is how they pair century-old techniques of Baijiu production with more Western Western drinking culture. In my past videos from this series, for example, we tasted a whole bunch of delicious, fruity and funky cocktails made with Ming River, and I am seriously impressed how delicious all of them were. But because we already took quite the progressive approach for the recipe in this video, I figured let's at least keep it traditional on the Baijiu front this time, and then that means drinking it neat and at room temperature, because that is how it's done in China. Woo! In this series, we've tasted quite a few different cocktails made with Ming River, but I think drinking it straight up might just be my favorite way of enjoying Baijiu. 
Let me tell you guys if you enjoy drinks with a fruity exotic note but also a complex twist, you are gonna like Ming River by Joe. Try it neat first, you know, get to know the flavor, but then use it in a cocktail. It really is super unique, probably unlike anything else you've had before, so you know, expand your horizons. Make sure to check out the link in the video description to find out how you can get your hands on a bottle of the real deal Sichuan Baijiu. Thank you Ming River for sponsoring this video and this entire series. And now let's go and taste some Xuan Cai Yu. Okay, well here it is, my lazy Xuan Cai Yu, and there's fish, there's tofu, there's pickled mustard greens, there are bean sprouts, everything is in here. Mmm. Mmm. I like it. It definitely works as a lazy substitute for Swan Tsai Yu. I don't think I get a lot of the mayo taste. I mean, if you know, maybe you can taste it a little bit. But if you didn't know, there's no way you'd know. It's delicious. But now, I need you guys to tell me <laughs> if this is actually... <laughs> Okay, or if I'm just making this up. One, two, two, eight. three. Oh, spicy. Mm-hmm. Mmm, very milky broth. I don't taste the mayo. I think it added more to the color of the broth than it didn't taste. I didn't know mayo had this like quality to it. You know that it makes something creamy and silky. I'm really enjoying the textural difference between the tofu and the bean sprouts. Thanks for cooking it. Thank you, Andong. Thank you. So I don't know how else to put it, guys, but I think that's a pass for mayo soup base. And speaking of which, so when we were planning out this video, I had this last minute idea of making a Sichuan style fried fish sandwich. Kind of inspired by Xuan Cai Yu however that might look. And honestly guys, I really think you gotta see this. So I started out with a quick spicy coleslaw. Step one, salt some shredded cabbage and carrots and mix them well. After at least 15 minutes, you can squeeze out a ton of moisture from them. Now add pickled green chilies, Chinese mustard green pickles, this is what they look like close up by the way, and mix with mayo and chili crisp. And then some more chili crisp. Now we're talking. Honestly, this is stupid easy and a surprisingly good fusion of flavors. For the fried fish itself, I followed a serious eats technique by Kenji Lopez Alt, but I added a few flavor notes to give this a Sichuan twist, like some white pepper and most prominently, a generous amount of zesty ground green Sichuan peppercorns, which plays extremely well with fish. That all went into a beer batter with some baking powder for lift, and as always, you'll find the exact recipe below. Then I I got myself more of these cod fillets, now at room temp, and went to town giving them a flour, batter, and then back into the flour treatment. And then finally, business time. Get some cooking oil up to 175 Celsius and carefully get those bad boys in there. Do not overcrowd your pan. And um, here's a little secret, you guys. I thought I could be all chefy and prep those on a wired rack, but turns out it can actually result in some serious sticky business. I even had to reapply extra batter in a desperate attempt to save my coating here. So the best way would be to get them straight into the hot oil after battering and then just shaking off the excess. But hey, I managed to get there in the end and I think we got ourselves some damn glorious looking crispy fried fish. Which means all there's left to do is building our burger. Lightly toasted brioche buns first, then a very generous layer of our Sichuan slaw, an even more generous piece of crispy fried fish. Man, that's getting me excited. Then some mayo, scallions and cilantro as a topping and there we go. What do you say guys? Would you take a bite of this? Oh, hello guys. Ah, so good. Seriously, for this one, I am absolutely pouring myself a little bit of Ming River Baijiu. Ooh, that's getting me in the mood. Guys, I am so ridiculously pumped to eat this Xuan Cai Yu inspired fried fish sandwich. Like, this was gonna be a video about Xuan Cai Yu, and this was gonna be a gimmick. But I think now, it might actually be the other way around. Like this is probably the highlight, the star of this video. I'm gonna get a nice juicy bite of this fantastic, ridiculous looking fried fish sandwich. I haven't been this excited for a bite in a long time, so. <laughs> oh. 
Oh my God. This is out of this world. This is madness. This is madness in the best possible way. Oh. Spiciness level. Mwah. Citron pepper in the batter. Mwah. Amazing idea. The slaw, it works. My biggest critique here is that I just used like very average frozen fish fillets for this. So it can only get so good with that type of fish, but the flavor combo and everything works amazing. If you make this with a good piece, with an actual good piece of fish, I'm not sure if I can handle it. I mean, I can barely handle this. What's happening? Every time you're eating, I'm just like, I don't want this. There's no way, there's no way to eat this and not make a mess. You guys, it's your, it's your turn. Mm. Mhm. Mm that texture is so delicious. I think the breading of the fish is enough crispiness on its own. It was like so lovely. I have to say this because I forgot to say before, but I feel like beer, like regular beer, light beer and Sichuan peppercorns, they combine into tasting like IPA. I really, really think this is good, like texture-wise and taste-wise. Mm -hmm. That's a solid fish sandwich. Really, really good, yeah. Where are your thumbs facing? Boom! <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you, Anna.